YouTube channel after playing Plus Mods 2 for nearly 200 hours I want to make a video expressing my thought on the game uh, This video is for anyone who has played Plus Mods 2 If you haven't played it or you're planning to play it, you can still watch it I hope you enjoyed this video and now let's dive into our topic Blasphemous 2 is one of the most outstanding games of 2023. The game has received overwhelming positive reviews. The biggest is the new three-weapon system, replacing the Mi Culpa Sword, the War Sensor Veredicto, the Rapier and Dagger Sarmiento and Centella, and the Praying Blade Rugo El Alba. Of these three weapons, Rugo El Alba is my favorite. At first glance, I didn't like it, it looks clumsy like a meat cleaver. But then after playing for a few hours, upgrading full combo, I became obsessed with this blade. Both the damage and strikes of Rugo Al Alba are powerful and graceful. This blade also contains symbols that fit with Penitent 1 and the game's atmosphere. Rugo Al Alba is amazing, but I've never seen discussions about its nuances, so I'm here to give it the deep dive it deserves. To start, here's a brief overview of what I'll be covering in the video. Number 1. The soundtrack of the Blade is highly Spanish-influenced. One of the most notable aspects of Blasphemous 2 is its soundtracks. Each soundtrack enhances the unique characteristics of the locations that players pass through. What's even more interesting is that the soundtrack also matches the spirit of the weapon. For example, the War Sensor Veredicto symbolizes mystery and the weight of history. To find the sensor, players must travel to a very ancient land containing sacred tombs. The soundtrack for this location is a perfect match for the sensor. There is something hidden deep within the sediment, something that players must uncover. The soundtrack's music is majestic, as if to praise a natural wonder. Or let's move on to Sarmiento and Centella. This weapon symbolizes the refinement, precision, and dexterity of the embroiderer. And you need to be an embroiderer to play it. Because if you don't have skills, this weapon is very weak, so that's why it's the most criticized. To find this weapon, you must go to the Satillo's Palace, a magnificent place for the embroiderers. Everything also matches perfectly. The soundtrack has a lot of string instruments, creating a lingering sound, a threading a needle feeling from the meticulous embroiderers at the palace. But with the Rugo Al Alba, what spirit does it symbolize? No one has ever said this before, but I can confidently say, it symbolizes the spirit of festivals and dancing, as it is a weapon that can perform combos with beautiful blood and thorn effects. It makes players feel like they are flamenco dancers with red dress. Just listening to its soundtrack makes you want to dance. The two soundtracks for the Sensor and Rapier Dagger are excellent, but I noticed that the Spanish influences are not clear. This is likely due to the lack of guitars, which are a symbol of Spanish music. Only the Blade soundtrack has a strong Spanish influence thanks to flamenco guitars. These guitars are a key element of what makes this soundtrack so special. Another interesting thing is the title of the soundtrack. It means Crown of Seven Orange Blossoms, inspired by Plaza de Espa in Seville, a square that also has seven main towers, orange in color built from bricks. About the number seven, there is an Easter egg I just discovered. The number seven on the Team 17 logo is a close-up of the blade. The blade seems to symbolize the number seven, the number seven of the Crown of Seven Towers, the number that carries the spirit of Mystic. And interestingly, 
The blade also has several mystic skills, as you can see. And to go deeper into this unique blade, we come to the next section. Number 2, Rugo Al Alba's concept closely related to Crown of Towers architecture. Penitent One finds the Rugo Al Alba hidden at the edge of the Crown of Towers, the game's brightest location. Coincidentally, the name Rugo Al Alba means I pray at dawn. The name itself is very closely associated with the architecture, when dawn is related to bright light. And because this is a praying blade, the weapon has a unique design with a rosary beads. Moreover, this design also relates back to the architecture, when beams and columns were also decorated with rosary beads wrapped around them. This is just a small detail of the concept, but it's also very tight and original. But more than that, look at the overall concept. There is a subtle point here. Do you notice that the image of Crown of Towers has the layout of a giant crown of thorns? And this layout again relates back to Rugo Al Alba, when it also unleashes lots of bloody crowns of thorns. When I recognized this layout, I fell in love with the blade. It was a very innovative and consistent design. It is as if Crown of Towers and Rugo Al Alba compress the meanings of each other within themselves, like two sides of the same coin. And especially, look at this weapon, we will immediately sense both the layout and the style of the location's architecture. While we look at the two others, we will sense only the style. Number 3, Rugo Al Alba's skills match with Thorn Symbol. Coincidentally, at Crown of Towers, we can also find the altarpiece The Guide. It was based on Dia Gracious, who sacrificed himself to protect the Penitent One's coffin. In the previous game, Dia Gracious gave the thorn on the Mi Culpa Sword. This thorn grew, made Penitent One bleed to absorb the sins of Custodia. In Blasphemous 2, there is no Dia Gracious nor Mi Culpa anymore. Instead, we have the thorny arm of the Penitent One and Rugo Al Alba. It couldn't be more perfect, like thorn combined with crowns of thorns. Moreover, besides Mystic, Sin and Guilt are also the main bases for this blade. Its skills rely also on Blood, Crimson, Retribution, Reaper, Rosary, Punish, justice, especially blood pact skill cutting off a piece of blood to become stronger by blood and thorns. And if we combine Dia Gracious's altarpiece with the Rugo Al Alba's, it will create resonance, making the blade pour out more crowns. About the dancing spirit I mentioned before, sometimes I feel Rugo Al Alba looks like a red dress from a flamenco dancer, but sometimes, I feel it looks like a wing from an eagle, because the thorns are both like claws and like feather. I don't know it's just my imagination, or I see penitent one swooping quickly from above like an eagle catching prey. And whenever the blood pact is full, the blade will make an ear catching eagle sound effect. Conclusion with keywords. And those are the main points I wanted to say about this special weapon. I'm still extremely excited when the game developer combines elements with weapons. And whenever I look closely at the Rugo Al Alba, I am even more overwhelmed. In my opinion, this is the most iconic and invested weapon in the game. I hope that after my video, we will love and play Rugo Al Alba even more. A more than perfect replacement for me Culpa. Okay, you can stop the video to review the keywords. Of course, these are just my own feelings, so if there are any mistakes, please let me know. And if you find this video useful, please like, share, and subscribe to support me. Thanks for watching! Hold on, before you turn off, I have another video on Viridiana, this special NPC character from Blasphemous 1. If you are interested, you can click on this link I show on description. Okay.